Yeah, yeah, what's up, y'all? Welcome to a special edition of the biggest, 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 biggest show in the land. The Fat Joe Show, the Big Big Show. Ah. Lucky Lefty was good. I'm getting to my special guest right now. My new BFF. Uh, we're going to run it up. UFO feed was good. John the check-in. Breon, what's good, my brother? Welcome to the biggest show in the land. I got a big guest. When I talk about big, I'm talking about huge. Huge. An American icon. Shout out to Soraka, much finer vodka. Wild Cherry Pepsi. Uh, do me a favor, um, take that Soraka and spread it out under y'all. She is ready. Come on, us professional. Just spread it out, Rich. Rich you can do that for now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Y'all, yo! Oh! Yeah, oh! It's your BFF here, your new. Listen, friend. never mind your Rich. Come here. Never mind me, Jewel, because my daughter. By the way, have the fun of Instagram Live. Is watching. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put it on because it feels heavy. My daughter is the executive producer. Open that up. We're having a hard time. This is embarrassing. Okay, open this. No, it's not. I think. All right. I'm sorry. Okay. So, I I watched Carol Sandberg. He had a Facebook. She was like struggling starting. No, nah, I don't really struggle. It's my daughter's the executive producer. She really takes care of this stuff. And so I'm sorry about that, yo, Rich. Run out of here. Instagram already. I'm sorry. No. Oh, please. That's the whole point of Instagram Live. Like the first few minutes is everybody going like, wait, how does this work? How do I do this? What okay, is okay. I'm so sorry. Yo, Drew, once again, welcome to the big, 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 big. That was as ghetto as it gets. And uh, and listen, I had such a great time showing you around the Bronx the other day. It was an amazing time with you. You have such a, a beautiful soul and personality about you. I feel like I knew you my whole life. Shout out to Cypress Hill. A lot of people are in the check-in now. Uh, Drew. Cypress Hill is here? No, Cypress Hill is watching you right now. No. And we, I, I, you know, I'll momentarily be shouting some people out. Team Assad, uh, DJ Khaled's son, Assad is on the check in. B. Dot, every, the work, the work. This is the biggest show in the land, Drew. Drew, um, how do you feel with the launch of your new show, your new talk show on TV? Tell me about this. You know, I, I, I think um, it's our season two. We learned a lot in season one. I feel like we can take all of that that we've learned. And we have an audience now. I'm able to go on a tour with you. It's like I'm getting to do things that we weren't allowed to. And so sometimes I think that when create some challenging. Those challenges can be the best that could have happened because, you know, sometimes the confined, not getting to do things like they should be will make you your own lane and give you time to figure out who you are. Yeah. I up into this show. True, you chop, you 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 you're coming in and out. Maybe you gotta get a little closer. How's this? Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> 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 Is this good? Can, can we spot a booger or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh it's so your whole life, right? Your whole life you've been in Hollywood, right? And and so your dad was in the business, 
and then yeah you and you went straight into the business as a kid and no in matter diapers. what you do on earth we'll always know you for et like i mean the, i mean you've accomplished so many things but et like i told my dad i left my dad and my mom's and i was talking to him in spanish he's cuban and and I was like, this girl, she's so big. She just, and they said, I was like, E.T. He was like, oh, the little girl from E.T. It's bad. I was like, the little girl from E.T. Oh, uh, what? I mean, do you even remember what that was like, Drew? Like back in them days? Yeah, very. You, you remember, you got memories of that. Very vividly, actually. Tell us about it. Um, it was like the first time I knew what having people around and like family type of, you know, environment. So I grew up with a single mom and I, you know, our house was a bit lonely and quiet and I loved the buzziness of ET and Steven Spielberg treated all the kids like not patronizingly. He believed in us and he spoke to us in a way that was so respectful and we felt like we mattered. And a lot of people baby kids, you know, they talk to them in a way where you feel like no kid wants to be called a kid, you know? Um, and he empowered us to, to, to work hard and feel good about what we were doing and um, be brave and have a sense of humor and wonder. And he was just the best person I've ever met at that point in my life. And he made me really believe in humans and humanity and goodness from, from people. And he's still someone who I'm close with, thank God. And I just took my daughter over to his house for dinner. And he asked her to do the line, Alligators from the Sores. And it was like a circle of life moment to watch him like coach and direct my daughter Frankie. That, that's uh, kind of that's kind of my next question, you right? Like, so you you grew up in a family royalty of uh, Hollywood, and now your kids. You have two kids, right? Do you do you want them to come up in Hollywood as actors and and, and actress, or, or do you or, or, or you want them to do? They own thing like uh because it's so hard to follow up such a great like you know you're a living legend you're an icon Drew like it's so much pressure on a kid to come up behind you like that. That's a a first of all thank you I I don't see myself that way but if if. Oh, we if do. I'm We're not crazy. In your eyes, then I'm very happy because you're a living legend, and I mean that with all of my heart. I don't really care what my kids do as long as they get to be kids, and then make that decision for themselves when they're older. I think I've made a very conscious decision not to include them in my social media. I have baggage with my own childhood that so I wouldn't change a thing. I love my childhood. But because of my upbringing, it's given me more sensitivity to exposing them and having them ever say to me, like, why did you do that? Or believe me, they don't. They want to be exposed. They're like, we want to be on your social media. We want to be on your show. And I'm like, I totally get it. You can enjoy TikTok. You can be on social media. You can be current and cool. And they are. They're really cool. Um, but I'm like, I, you have to grow and develop into a, a sound mind and become your own people. And then I'll support whatever it is you want to do as long as it's safe and healthy. But so if they wanted to be actors, that's fine. What I wouldn't, what I'm three, I just didn't want to put them out there um too soon so i want it to be their choice because i feel now with us being celebrities for so long and with social media it's like we gotta post our sandwich we gotta post what we're doing and 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 and, and with me hip-hop music is so competitive and you know i got into a lot of rap beats when i was growing up it's, it's normal but I always protected my son, Joey, my eldest son. He's autistic. So I didn't really like to post him or put him out there like that because it could get really nasty. 
So yeah. out of protecting him or making me go crazy, I wouldn't show him like that. But now that I'm like, you know, the OG and I don't get into this stuff, I can, I can show him now and stuff like that. So I understand why you cautious about this. That makes me feel really good to hear you say that. And I definitely think when my kids are ready, it's hard because it's like you're hiding the most important part of your life. So it's a tough decision to make. And I understand why people want to share their lives. I get it. I don't judge it. It's just um, I can't wait until they're old enough where it feels right. And that's not a number. It's just a time in life when they present themselves to me to be more developed people and it feels right. And I'm totally with you. I wanted to wait and not regret. I wanted to wait and then feel when that spirit moves me. But they're, they want to be on it. They love it. They think it's oh, super Of course fun. they want to be on it. Um, me the Doberman. And um, because I'm like a Doberman with them. I'm so protective. Gotta and, be. And I also want them to kind of feel that level of protection that life, it, life in the fast lane, life on social media doesn't give people. It's so outward and so extrovert. I want them to feel that, that I'm like a human armor and shield. And if they understand what that feeling is like, maybe they'll be drawn to other people who protect them too. That's right. I feel the same way. It's up to us to protect them, even if we're the fun killers and, and they, they get upset all they want. But we know this, it's a really cruel world out here. In the comments, everybody keeps saying Firestarter, Firestarter. Oh, Firestarter. God, I love that movie so much. That's your favorite? It's definitely one of my favorites because it, I mean, when you're a kid and you get to have that superpower it just it really emboldened me and i was such a rebel anyway that it's like fire starter and the show i got to do santa clarita diet are very true to me because i as much as i'm an optimist and into the goodness and the treatment and the kindness and the care of humans it, which is really my mission in life on the flip side of my record you said Cypress Hill was in the house. Like I went and spray painted my ex-boyfriend's car while listening to Cypress Hill. Like, you know, if you, I, I, if you poke me, I bite back. I am the Doberman. So I like Firestarter. I was like, that's right. I'm going to throw a fireball at you or Santa Clarita died. I was like, you know, many times we. So. As much as I'm like flowery, I really do relate to like the dog that bites back. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Me, I'm loving. I'm humble. I love everyone, but I'll bite back. Like, I, like, like to a fault too. Because prior, I remember when I had uh, my things with Fifty Cent. When we squashed him with brothers now, he had told me, yo, you, I could go, I could go at you any day, and I knew you would snap back. And, and, and so when your enemies know that you'll respond right back, it could work against you. Yeah, I, as I've gotten older, um, I have learned not to react as fast if I take a step back and then I come to talk to somebody about something I'm so much more articulate and calm and a better person and the version of myself I want to be and whenever I react in the moment I'm just like oh damn it I I failed that again I I I overreacted um and it's amazing how much like you get, you do, you just get better as you get older. When you're a kid and young, you're invincible and immortal and an idiot. <laughs> it's like, you don't, you don't know yet um, how to handle situations. We're all learning. And, um, but I think I'll always have that rebel in me. 
I don't know if it's an issue with authority figures or. Now, you know, like, dude, you're like good crazy. Like, you're like the good, you're like the friend that's good crazy. That you're, you're, you're the coolest in the world, but we know Drew's deep shit. Don't play with us. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, don't mess with any of my friends because I really will come at you. I just, oh. That really ruffles my feathers. I do. I have to talk myself down a lot. I get very fiery, um, and I'm uber emotional and passionate, but that really is drowned out by the voices that's about, you know, we're here on this planet to take care of each other. I feel a total divine intervention about goodness and, and just taking care of each other. I don't know how else to put it. I do believe that we're here for that and that you can't let that, you know, other side be the dominant side. It has to, it's okay that all of us have our little inner rebels for mm -hmm. sure, but the dominant side has to be the peacekeeper or the, the lover of other humans. And that is alive and true, but Shout out my good friend Anthony Ramos. He's the new star in oh, Transformers. I love he, you love Anthony? Oh He's my a God, great guy. God, He's on the in. Hi, Anthony. I'm such a fan. <laughs> I really am. And I'm so happy that everybody is so just mad for you right now, that everybody is appreciating everything you're putting out into the world. And, um, it's so well deserved. You know, I have a little small role on Monday in the Adam Sandler movie, a cameo. Shout out wow. my boy Joe Bessie. Tell us about you and Adam Sandler. You know, you guys did so many classics together. You've been working together for so long. What is the chemistry between you and Adam Sandler the way it, way it works so much? That's a beautifully posed question. I think chemistry is all about admiration. And it's like, you know, Adam and I have never dated. We've only been friends. I love his wife, Jackie. I've watched his daughters grown up. We're family. We're very, we're almost like brother and sister, but I, but we're, we, we're just, we, I admire him so much. And I, you know, I stalked him. I just said, listen, uh, I know we're supposed to be together. I forced him to have coffee with me. I showed up in my, perp in my, with my purple hair and my leopard coat, looking like a vintage, you know, weirdo. And he showed up in the same thing he wears today, long shorts and a long t-shirt. And I, I said, I, look, I know we don't look like a match, but... We, we are, I just know it. And I think people have to kind of reach out to people that they have such, oh, you saw a doppelganger on TV. I just watched the comment. That was the weirdest movie ever. Um, I, I, um, I mean, just the weirdest. Um, you have to tell people that you have an instinct or a desire or, you, 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 you should try to collaborate with people, really believe it. And I believed in Adam so much. And I'm just lucky that he believed in me back. And we found The Wedding Singer as our first project. I came to him and said I, he had the script of 51st Dates, which was 51st Kisses at the time. And it was a drama, but I had read the script and I knew it and I chased it for years. And I was like, this is supposed to be our next one. I know it. And with Blended, he was just like, this one's kind of new for us. We'd be parents, but we're parents in real life. Should we just do this? And it just fell into place. But we really fought the good fight to find the right things at the right time um, and not just throw stuff at the wall mm -hmm. and hope it sticks. Um, and, and it's worth fighting for, to work with the people you believe you're supposed to work with. Yeah, of course. Uh, sometimes uh, I did it. I, I took a cheap shot at Drake last night. We had dinner with him and my brother Khaled. And I was like, man, do you think the world will ever hear a Drake Fat Joe song? And, and he, was like, he, he was like, man, 
I knew I came here for a reason. I'm like, yo, sometimes you gotta take that shot and throw it in the air. I know he heard me, you know. Uh, he was always making albums. Like when we did The Wedding Singer, he would like go off to a studio or a trailer and same with um, 51st um, Dates. He, he, was, he was so prolific about making albums. And I mean, with you and Khaled hanging out, you know, feels like very inspired times. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, this 51st dates, right? Like, do you think there's a man out there alive in real life that could pull that off? Do you think that story exists in real life? Like a man trying to convince, you know, uh, and acting like it's a 50 for, do you think there's a good guy somewhere that would actually do that in real life? I, I, I read, my character reads a book at the beginning of the movie that we established she reads the, every day because it's the same day every day. And I chose the book um, Still Life with Woodpecker by Tom Robbins because in the first chapter it says, this is a book asking the question, how do you make love stay? So probably not. It's a movie. So, you know, it's setting up ridiculous expectations, of course. And there's even the scene where Maya Rudolph is like mad at her husband like, you wake up every day and try to convince her that, you know, she's, that you're in love, that she, you're in love with her and wait for her to come around. And then she like slaps her husband. She's like, what are you, you don't even open the car door anymore. So I, I do think that there's like a heightened sort of impossible to live up to standard about that film. But what I love about it is in a relationship, if you decide to stay with someone for a long time, I hope you do find something every day to be nice to them about, let go of, find something um, fresh about them. As much as it seems like impossible, the lengths he goes to, I do wish that people had a daily reminder to appreciate each other in a relationship, um, be good to each other, remember the good thing about each other and not that I wanna just pick on this and fight about this. I, I, I haven't had any luck, I'm still single <laughs> for many years. Um, and I, I, do, I do know that if we talk all the time about how we're supposed to be so nice to each other and have each other's backs, we have to do that when we're in relationships too. Mm. And I do think people, you know. Well, you know, I believe, I believe that can. somebody, I'll tell you a story, right? One of my famous stories. When I was growing up in the Bronx, I took you around there near the projects. I would look the out the window, I would look out the window every day to find out what the weather was. And every morning before I went to school, I would see this little woman. She's a short, let's just say, full-figured Spanish uh, woman with this tall, skinny black man. Tall, skinny. And they would hold hands every day and walk to the bus stop. I guess they were husband and wife. And they would walk to the bus stop together every day. And they were so in love. They would just kiss each other, walking down the street. And I knew at that point that there's always somebody for somebody. Like, God always makes somebody for somebody. So, sooner or later, uh, Drew, somebody will come sweep you off your feet, and it, he'll be a Prince Charming. You know what I'm saying? He'll be the right one. It's, I, 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 the, genetically, DNA-wise, it just lines up. And you'll be like, yeah, this is my guy. You know what I'm saying? I like this guy. He, 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 it, it, it'll be the, he'll be the one. And uh, well, personally, I, am, I think... Uh, I am a romantic Joe, and that's why I love the question, because I think 50 First Dates, your question, the opportunity to prompt people to hold each other's hands, or a little flower on someone's pillow, or write them a note every day, or 
back off when things are getting heated up and you be a better person. So we need five. We need five. We're going to be better in five. I don't know what it is, but one day, little tiny thing that couples could do for each other. I believe in that. I think it's necessary for stability. And even though uh, I don't believe in uh, if you argue, terrible argument, right? And you go to sleep, I believe in when you work, wake up the next day, it's a brand new day. You can't yeah. bring yesterday's argument into today. It, 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 it's always been a secret. Do you mean <laughs> yesterday's crisis is <laughs> not today's, today's crisis? crisis. Yo, yo, Julie, let me tell you, that's getting out of hand. I'm walking through the airport. Old ladies are like, yesterday's price and not today's. I mean, unbelievable. It, it just, it, 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 it appeals to so many different people for so many different reasons. I love uh, it. Charlie's Angel. We almost done. Charlie's Angel. Tell me about that, that role in Charlie's Angel. When I was a kid, my mom used to take me to like tap, jazz, ballet, and I hated it. I didn't fit in square. I didn't have the body type. Um, my ballet teacher was, you know, had no time for me. I wasn't, I didn't fit the mold, actually and physically. Um, really, I mean, the rebel in me was just like, I was a scowler. And jazz and, you know, dance class. I just, I didn't feel like I fit in. And then my mom took me to karate. And it was like Dorothy walks out and Oz goes to color. I finally found my people. It didn't matter what you physically were like. It was about unity and capability and kind of a place to work stuff out and skill and love. And I think it did something to me. It's, it liberated me in a way that I did what inspired Charlie's Angels. It's like, it doesn't matter who you are or what you look like. You can be a butt kicker. You can be funny. You can be capable. You can have a skill set. You can do all these things. And so, and we feel so vulnerable in so many situations where the one that feel empowered and I think Charlie is sort of like an ode to through it find your tribe find your little power and especially for girls I don't know how it is for guys while you're kicking butt last night and like you know we're we're girls we never stop like communicating and thinking we're overthinkers of everything and and also, if you're going to be a butt kicker, don't be a angry butt kicker. Be like funny and make jokes and have people's backs. But you don't have to be like an angry man as a woman in the action world. And I think that movie for me is a perfect metaphor for like, find what works for you and be that and be that to its fullest. And, and don't try to fit into molds. Don't feel good about yourself. Um, I never thought I'd get to do an action movie. Never thought in my wildest dreams. I'm not the tallest. I'm not the most strong. I'm goofy. Um, and yet, we tailor made it for to make you feel fun and empowered. And it was a dream come true. It, and, and created that dream. We fun with it. So it's the best experience of my life. Plus, I'm still so close with Cameron and Lucy. Like, they're my family. That was also a great time in two, the year 2000 to have a film that didn't have gossip about girls fighting like that. It was like, good. What, where is the sisterhood in Hollywood for craving? Because all the women were super great to each other. And no more cat fights and no more BS. Like, let's do this. You know, I hate when I look at these reality shows and the first thing the girls do is throw a shoe or a drink. I'm like, I'm in a restaurant every night. I never see women throw drinks at each other. Like, I don't know where they get this stuff from on TV, right? Like, 
The go-to move is like throw a drink. I'm like, like I never see this in real life. Yeah, I know. It's not how it rolls in my house, but it's a spectator sport, reality TV. So, you know, when you have a camera on you, you're going to act the craziest to get the most camera time. And I think ever since, like, you know, Jerry Springer and Morton Downey Jr. and all those shows came on, people realized that people had an appetite. You know, sometimes it's wrestling, it's theatrics, and, and people love it. So you can't fight City Hall. That stuff is, people love it. But People love that stuff. You know, I, um, I love Jerry Springer. You know, I just had a versus with, with Ja Rule that's similar. We was doing song for song, and I had to play into this character, even though I love this guy to death. And we had to, like, almost do WWE. And then at the end, we hugged each other. We said, we love each other. You know what? It, it, it's to have the engagement of the fans and have everybody root for their favorite artists. You know, you got you to gotta do it. Yeah. You got to play into that. Yeah. It's theatrics. A, qu a question, a good question, right? Because you grew up in Hollywood. Who are some of the kids you went to school with that became, like, actors and, and in big movies and... I didn't really go to school very much. I was mostly on like set school, and then I got emancipated when I was 14, being a legal adult, and never went back. And I lived in an institution before that for a year and a half. But I didn't really go to school. Um, and um, whenever I was there for like a week or a month, I think, you know, the other kids were like, oh, this is special because you get to come out of here. So I just, I, it wasn't a part of my, but, um, so I don't, I don't, I don't know any kids. I went to school with one guy, his name is Jim, he's a director, I loved him, and he was, and he was like a nerd like me, now he's a cool director, made freaks and he's like, he's just a really creative genius, um, and he's like the son of this guy, Lawrence Cap, one of the great writers in he wrote Star Wars and, you know, made all the big chill. And anyway, um, he's like the only person I know that's out there working to went to school. Jake Tasden. Uh, but I, I, I also went to school with Brecken Meyer, who was in Clueless and a bunch of movies. He played Birkenstock. Um, and he was like my first boyfriend. That's, that's one. My first kiss, too. Your um, first kiss? Yes, he was my first kiss. I was his first kiss. How but, old How old were you when you got the first kiss? Oh, my God. I don't know. Nine? You know, my daughter's 15, man. I swear to God, I'm going to kill somebody, Drew. I know. I better, I better not hear about a first kiss. No, I, I know. know. I mean, it's, I, again, the Doberman. I mean, I, I, I can't even handle it. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm with you, Joe. I. You, and, and, you know, for years since she was born, I would drive down, especially in LA, right? I would drive down in LA and look at the bus stop and see two teenagers, and one of them got the slick back hair, and he's talking so smooth to the. I'd be like, when I catch that guy who's talking to my daughter, I'm going to tear this kid apart. This I is scary, right? I'm going to send you a few numbers now that we're BFFs. I, like, please help me because, you know, I, I will never hide my life from my kids. I'm so proud of everything I learned and experienced because what led me to be, this, like, chaste, like, conservative, a, pillars of appropriateness. I wouldn't know all those things if I hadn't tried so many things, but I'm so traditional and want them to be and wait and take their time and what I guess I'm trying to do is I come full circle in my life after trying everything under the sun and raising myself mistakes and learning and being my own job creator and all those is good girls are where it's at and so help me Joe just Keep my girls back because good girls are where it's at. 
Listen, let me tell you something, man. Uh, your boss, your boss, an executive, uh, and I saw you when we did the show. I didn't want to bother you enough, but because I see you calling the shots in the nicest way. Like I see you running through things, and you was like, oh, we're coming in through here. We're shooting it like this, with this. Uh, that's the thing, huh? You, you like to call the shots. You like to control your situation. I don't want to, like, I, you know, I'm sure you have a vision of how you want to be done. So it's always a matter of making sure that vision is being executed. But never, ever, ever being disrespectful or acting like know it all or speaking in way that isn't empowering and can still get all done. But the point is to recruit and not alienate. And um, so that I'm really thoughtful about uh, because I wouldn't want someone to talk to me like that. I would get into Doberman rebel mode and it would just piss me off and I would want to take that person down. So I'm more about, you know, um, the goodness and, and the joy. You, you asked me, I think, I'm the, I think I'm the best boss in the world. Everybody's doing good. I don't bother nobody. I barely know anybody's name. If I do say, can I have a word with you? There's a problem. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, if you're working and you're doing your thing, I, I don't bother you for nothing. Hey, how, how's everybody? Or if I do like, let me talk to you for a second. There's a situation. Like, <laughs> like because... I want to be the coolest boss in the world. I want to be the nicest guy. As long as we all know that uh, we all share one common goal to where we want to uplift each other, want to see everybody win. Uh, yeah. Everybody, everybody. Women, men, the same way. I mean, you know, I tell all the guys that work, work with me and the ladies that I want to see them as bosses. I want them to own their own businesses. I want them to own their own companies. You know, I don't want to be one of those guys to have a worker for 20 years. I want you to grow, and we only get one life. So I want, you know, I'm that type of daredevil that'll take a risk. You know what I mean? And I want other people to do the same. Yeah. Yeah, I've been around you, too, and you are good to people. You are kind and wonderful. And um, the next time anybody messes with my kids or I think they're messing up, I'm going to send them to you so you can say, I'd like to have a word with you and scare the pants off. Of <laughs> Yo, Drew, you got, you got the crew in New York now. Yeah. They, in LA, they call it checking in. You all checked in in New York. You good to go. You can, you can tap dance anywhere around here. They know Drew's with Joe. She's good. Uh, Trust me when I tell you. <laughs> She's good. Oh, um, shout out to my brother Emmanuel Lewis. You remember Webster? Oh, Emmanuel I love Lewis. Emmanuel. Hi, Emmanuel. We used to do like fun Hollywood things together, you know, like some show or event. I love Emmanuel. He was the best. You are the best. Yeah, that's my friend, man. He's my good brother. I sit with him and I ask him uh, stories. Usually, people ask me stories. But when I get with Emmanuel, I ask him all these Michael Jackson stories. Like, oh, I yeah. just, you know, and he be talking, and I be like this with the popcorn, you know, the five in the morning. I won't let the man go to sleep. I just be like, yo, Emmanuel, tell me another one. Tell me another one. Oh, it's amazing. He is good. You're, you were always so nice to me, and it meant so much. Every time I see you, I just have like, the best. Hello, Emmanuel. It's been too long. Yeah, Drew, thank you for coming on the show. I love you so much. Love you. you have all my info, anything you need, please let me know. I am, I, I the minute that we met, everything about your energy magnetized, and I just wanted to be around you. I want to be around you. I love the developing friendship we have. It makes so much to me so real. I am here for this. I'm here for you. Yo, Drew, we love you so much, man. And what's crazy is 
when we took you in the projects, everybody knew you. Every all the guys came out, yo, Jew, we love you. Yo, Jew, like you, you big hit out there. Everybody don't get that. That I'm love so like you. You got that love. So do you. I mean, you say Fat Joe and everybody flips out. It's very rare to have that much of like an ambassadorship that you have, which is a testament to your goodness. All right. I love you, Drew. Thank you so much, man. God bless you. <laughs> God. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Drew Barrymore. Come on, man. You don't know who I know. You don't know who I know. Like, come on, man. Like, what a pleasure. <laughs> you, you turn on your phone, Fat Joe's on there with Drew Barrymore. You don't know who I know. Uh, listen, God bless Drew. She is the sweetest, kindest person in the world. Uh, I don't want to end this without saying, uh, and this has nothing to do with Drew, but um. Breaks my heart to see what's going on in the border down there in Texas. And we got to get this thing straight. Uh, what's happening to our Haitian brothers and sisters down there. Uh, breaks my heart. I pray to God we fix the situation. Because, uh, you know, love, peace, humanity, man. It just breaks my heart what's going on out there. Please make a change down there. We do not need that energy at all. Listen, everybody. Team Massage, what's up, y'all? Yesterday's price is not today's price. Uh, yeah, I was going to get there. Um, shout out to my brother Drake. Shout out to Cali. Oh, my God, Team Jordan. Uh, if you're wondering in that picture where me, Drake, and Cali are staring. What's up, Timberland? Timbo the King are staring into this phone. These are pictures of Khaled's next sneaker. Jordan sneaker, huh? They said what? They said they were looking at nudes. We was looking at nudes. Get out of here. We was looking at sneakers. Uh, the only thing that could make me look at something like that is sneakers. Didi Barbara, what's up? It was amazing. Cousin Miriam, what's up? It was amazing. Khaled got the illest sneaker coming out soon. DJ Juanito, what's up? Look, let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. If you ever go through something, it can be a bad relationship. It can be a uh, brush with the law. It can be financial. It can be whatever. And your so-called best friends and your family members, turn it back on you and they're not there for you when you need them. Don't lie to yourself. These ain't your people. Move on and get around some better people that really love you for you. God, we put God first all the time. We put God in good and bad times. Everybody waits to pray to God when something's going bad. But just know you got to pray to him all the time because God is with you all the time. And a lot of times, they sh he shows us lessons. And we say, why me? Why, why am I going through this? And the truth is, it's really a lesson to prepare you to go to the next level. Melbourne Moore, living legend. Drop. What's up, Drop? We do that video soon. Raul T.S. I love you guys. We the biggest in the game. Thank you for checking in. Thank my sister, my new BFF, Drew Barrymore, living legend, icon. We the biggest in the game.